Thank you very much uh, for this invitation uh, to the United Nations to provide an overview of the social impacts of Tropical Storm Erica. Uh, my presentation this morning will be based on the work done primarily by UNICEF and UN Women uh, during the World Bank-led process. Uh, I would like to begin uh, by, of course, acknowledging uh, the presence of the Prime Minister, uh, Mr. Roosevelt Scare, the Honorable Roosevelt Scare, other members of the cabinet, uh, members of the diplomatic community, members of the government, uh, permanent secretaries, uh, and of course, uh, members of the general public as well. Uh, as agreed with the government, I will also make a few references uh, to the resettlement process at the end of this presentation. So in order to uh, understand the social impacts, I've organized this presentation essentially around three questions. What data do we have about the population of Dominica? What effects did Tropical Storm have on them, particularly on the most vulnerable groups? And what are some of the issues we still need to quantify uh, to ensure an effective recovery and resettlement process? In other words, as the Prime Minister uh, is, is very clear about saying, building back better. So, if we go to the next slide, please, thank you. Um, what do we know about the population of Dominica? According to the preliminary 2011 population census report, the country's population stood at 71,293 people. That's 36,411 males and 34,882 females. Uh, definitely a young population, children under 14, making up slightly over a quarter of that population, and if you look at uh, the population under 25, it is approximately uh, just under 42%. At the same time, there is a significant elderly population over the age of 60, uh, which is approximately 14.8% of the population. And notably, that, is, uh, that population is, the majority of that population is female. Now, poverty rates amongst men and women uh, before Tropical Storm America were quite comparable. 28.8% uh, of men were deemed poor, 28.9% of women. However, women were more likely than men to be unemployed, so 33.8% of females versus 20.8% of, uh, 20% of males. Youth unemployment, uh, as it is uh, in, in other parts of the OECS, is quite high, 39.9% amongst the 15 to 19 year olds and 22.2% amongst the 20, uh, 20 to 24 year olds. And this means that young people account for approximately two thirds of the unemployed. Now, of those people who were employed before Tropical Storm America, 20.7% uh, of them reported during the assessment that they had been unemployed as a result of the storm. Now, when we look at vulnerability, we need to consider a number of different factors, such as socioeconomic status, the available resources to people, health, age, family dynamics, gender, ethnicity. Uh, women, children, and youth are amongst the most vulnerable groups of people in Dominica. The poverty assessments indicate that more than half of Dominica's uh, children and youth live in those uh, poorer households. Many live in women-headed households, which represent uh, more than 39% of the total households in Dominica, but approximately 45% of the households amongst the displaced. Now, globally, we know from other situations that women and children are more at risk in natural disasters than men, especially amongst the lower socioeconomic classes. This is not just because they tend to be in substandard housing, but also because they have fewer assets to rely on after the disaster. In addition, it's common in the difficult circumstances that follow a disaster for women and girls, and in particular single women who are heading households, to be exposed to a higher rate, uh, higher risk of gender-based violence, uh, increased violent, uh, incidents of violence against children and, and, and against children as a result of disasters are often correlated with these issues related to the instability in housing, to food insecurity, and to breaks in access uh, to justice. So those are a few of the sort of more global uh, findings that we, that we know. So in short, we know that women and children 
have higher vulnerabilities in Dominica and that these vulnerabilities were likely exacerbated by the effects of Tropical Storm Erica. Therefore, they and other vulnerable groups deserve extra and particular attention as we plan the recovery and as we plan for resettlement. Now, what effects did Erica have on the social sector? So I don't want to uh, repeat too much of what, what uh, my colleague Johannes has presented, but just very quickly to summarize on health, uh, of the, the hospital, the 50 primary care facilities, nine were flooded and out of operation for at least several days. Um, total damages and losses in the health sector at that time were estimated to be uh, in excess of uh, 5 million EC dollars. Now here I would note that uh, the Pan American Health Organization was able to uh, mobilize approximately a million dollars in support, including from some of the partners in this room, and that provided a, a range of services, including a restocking of basic medicines and, and materials, uh, water tanks at 38 clinics, and as well, uh, direct support to the Ministry of Health uh, and their Emergency Operations Center. There is a need to assess which health facilities are most at risk and to mitigate those risks, including through hydrological surveys on the water courses which are close to the health facilities. And here, Dominica can and does benefit uh, from the support of PAHO, uh, of, to PAHO, of DFID's Smart Hospitals program. Uh, Ensuring, uh, also important to ensure a reliable supply of water and standby generators may be needed, may need to be prioritized for certain facilities. It's also important to note that the lack of communications with some of those health centers meant that it took several days to ascertain the conditions of the centers and that would certainly have limited the ability of those centers to have notified the Ministry of Health's Emergency Operations Center if there were serious, uh, when and if there were serious medical problems. Now, in terms of education, uh, as, as my colleague from the World Bank has pointed out, seven, uh, 75 schools, 23 impacted, 13 having suffered uh, structural damage, uh, two destroyed, and that affected uh, 3,420 students, which is a quarter of all of the students in Dominica. Total loss and damage in excess of 10 million EC. The start of the school year was delayed, uh, and the effects of this will still to be still to be seen whether or not students can fully catch up on that. Uh, there was considerable social, uh, considerable psychological support uh, from a variety of sources, including including UNICEF. Uh, and certainly those children who suffered loss and trauma may need continued support. They may deal with uh, the effects of what they have seen for some time. For those schools that were destroyed or structurally damaged, uh, it's a very useful, a very important opportunity to utilize, to, to build them back better. For example, that can include uh, important things such as the appropriate gender segregation of washrooms and sanitation facilities. So to take advantage of, of, of the opportunities to, to, to uh, embed those sorts of principles. Uh, we'll certainly need to do uh, additional risk assessments on other schools to identify those necessary risk assessment, reduction assessment uh, measures and other improvements that could be undertaken, uh, the lessons that we've learned from this, from this situation. On housing, uh, I, I don't want to, again, repeat too much, but certainly uh, extensive, lo uh, uh, extensive losses in the housing sector, uh, close to 150 million EC at the time of the, the assessment was done. Um, in addition to the confirmed damages, certainly there would be a significant number of houses that would have to be considered over time uh, unfit for continued habitation. Um, now, the data that we had received from the Ministry of Planning at that time indicated that 84.3% uh, of the dwellings which were damaged or destroyed by Erica were uninsured. So those owners and renters will obviously face particular challenges in rebuilding. Uh, housing losses as a result of Erica will also impact men and women's livelihoods in different ways, um, partly because of the potential loss of income experienced by many of the displaced who would have been running home-based uh, livelihood activities, home-based uh, activities such as hairdressing, shops, etc. 
uh, or those who were practicing commercial and subsistence farming in the spaces directly around their homes. And this would indeed apply to the majority of the population uh, from Petit Sava. Uh, as the summary has then uh, highlighted, we do have some indications as to how Tropical Storm Erica has affected the people of, of Dominica, and particularly these vulnerable, most vulnerable groups, such as women and children. However, there are areas where we do not yet have enough information, and it will be important to collect that information to shape the recovery process. So, for example, in the area of housing, we know that housing has a direct bearing on gender equality and social inclusion. Ownership rights, land titling variations amongst men and women could I'm not saying they will, but could limit participation in resettlement programs and the benefits that accrue from participating in those programs. So we would need to be particularly attentive to that dimension. Uh, in the area of unemployment, of employment, how has Erica affected the ability of people, uh, particularly women-headed households, to provide for their families? Have their vulnerabilities increased the through the since the storm, and how can that be reversed? And for those who were involved in home-based businesses, how could those be resuscitated? Uh, in terms of inclusion, uh, certainly the assessment of the impact of Tropical Storm America indicates that special attention needs to be paid to that dimension of gender, because these, uh, these kinds of events affect men and women, boys and girls differently. A large percentage of uh, women-headed households would have been affected by the storm, and this has significant implications, as I, I've mentioned. Now, also because many, uh, many of the Dominican women uh, who are affected do not have steady incomes or would have limited ownership of land or low levels of access to financing, uh, we have to factor in those things as we include those families uh, in, in, in resettlement activities. And obviously underlying this in our effort to make sure that we're being as well targeted as possible, uh, we need to have solid sex and age disaggregated data. Uh, and, there should, and that would include a variety of, of gender and child sensitive indicators. Now here I'm aware that the Office of Disaster Management uh, has been collecting a great deal of this data on affected people. And this is certainly going to give us an excellent uh, place uh, to continue to, to start and continue those activities. So uh, in order to delve further into some of those issues that I've discussed, uh, the government uh, has asked uh, the United Nations to assist with a social impacts and livelihoods assessment. We, ind we intend to develop that terms of reference with the government in the coming days and certainly uh, a major effort will be to make sure that we quantify the impact over time and the, the, the longer term impacts as well on vulnerable groups such as women, children, the elderly, and persons living with, with physical and, and mental disabilities. And we've certainly also been discussing with the government, uh, the Caribbean Development Bank and the OECS Commission, how any work that gets done now uh, can best inform the next country poverty assessment uh, which would be scheduled at the present time for 2016. I'll just close with a few comments on resettlement. Um, from the side of the United Nations, the UN Development Program, and the UN Office for Project Services uh, have been in discussion with the government regarding the provision of technical assistance for the resettlement program. Uh, this could include hydrologists, geologists to assess the safety of current and potential settlements, supporting the master planning for new settlements such as the relocated Petit Savin, uh, providing architectural services and providing the necessary uh, social and counseling support services that go along with resettling people. I think the key principle here, as the Prime Minister has repeatedly said, will be to build back better. And that requires taking full account of the risks mitigating them as much as possible, uh, but also recognizing that some areas out of those risk assessments will be designated as unsuitable for settlement. Any resettlement program should, should where as much as possible, make use of, of standard designs in low risk areas, uh, and should uh, incorporate a variety of dis uh, disaster resilient uh, features, such as hurricane resistant roofing, seismic resistance, uh, et cetera. Um, and as highlighted earlier, uh, 
it will be essential for the resettlement uh, process to be done in close collaboration with the vulnerable groups I've outlined, women, the elderly, etc., and to keep the interests of children and youth in mind. Uh, I would also conclude by saying that a successful resettlement plan that puts people into safer and less vulnerable communities will be a very important example for the entire region. Thank you very much.